the one that matters, isn't he? Yes. Hallelujah. That verse and that song about that chaotic love that moved in messed you up. God will mess you up. He'll mess you up. Hallelujah. You think you're so cool and got your life all together? God moves in and messes you up. Come on. Everything changes. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, I want to tell the church about Friday night, how great it was. We had a good turnout. You know, me and Pastor Joseph was talking and he was saying, you know, people show up, you got food, you got you got all kind of things going on, but when you say come out to pray, not too many people want to do that. But we we filled that room up pretty good last oh, yeah. Friday night. And I want to tell you something. God took notice of that. Come on. When you start crying out to God for people in your family that, that are lost and are hurting, and God hears that. And I believe we're going to see the fruit of that. We're going to do it again in March. I think it's March 23rd. Be looking. We're going to be telling you. We're going to do it again. Now, if you wouldn't have showed up, I was out of told Pastor Joel, we ain't wasting time and money to do it. Because every time we rent one of these rooms, it costs us money. I said, but if they show up, we're going to do it. We're going to do it again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man. <laughs> I can just stand here. It feels so good. Hallelujah. I want to start a new series. It's going to take me probably uh, six weeks, uh, two months. And it's a series that I entitled Christ in Us. And this particular message I entitled The Centrality of Victory. You know, Christianity, true Christianity, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about true Christianity when a person is born again in the spirit of the living God and filled with the Holy Spirit. Christianity is about winning in life. Not being a loser. I was a loser for the first 27 years of my life. No matter what I did, it just didn't work out right. Because I was in sin. I was ungodly, immoral, everything. Nothing worked. But when Christ came into my life, I began winning. And I want to tell you, when Christ is the center of your life, as Pastor Joseph preached so, so mightily a couple weeks ago, that Christ is the center. And when, when you have to realize not even Christ is the center of your life, but He is in your life. Come on. Paul said Christ in you is the hope of glory. When you have Christ in you, you are a winner, not a loser. All right, come on. And that's what this series is going to be about. This series will bring light to what it really means to have Christ living in us. That's true Christianity. So you can go to church all you want. You can do all your religious things and not have Christ living in you. When you have Christ living in you, you are a winner. You will win. Because he promises that. Let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God. To obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now verse 4 and 5 is going to be the theme for this message today. I want to read it again. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Say everyone. Everyone, everyone born of God overcomes the world. 
This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only. Say only. Only. Not everybody. Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the winners. That's the only way you're going to win. Only. There's only one way. Jesus is that way. So this speaks of the believer's victory over the world. <laughs> You gotta beat the world. You gotta beat this world. This world is against you. This world is against everything that is godly. It's against you. Jesus said this in John chapter 16, verse 33, and I'm gonna read it in the amplified version. Jesus said, I told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration but be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Certain. Undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what, what, what better promise you want to have than that right there? Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. How many know that? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Man is born in trouble. As soon as you come into this world, you're going to face trouble. As soon as you come out the womb, you're going to begin to face trouble. It's here. Even for a believer. Right. Don't be, don't be uh, uh, misinformed that once you become a Christian, everything is fine. Oh, a lot of things are fine, but guess what? Trouble is still out there. Right. Right. Trouble is still coming your way. Right. It's still there. But Jesus said this, be of good cheer. See, as a believer, you got to be of good cheer. Take courage. <coughs> be confident. Be certain, be undaunted, for I have overcome the world. In other words, I beat this system. <coughs> so if I am in you, you're going to beat it. Come on. See, Jesus said, I've defeated this world for you. See, we don't have to beat it anymore. Jesus beat it. So if Jesus is in us, we're going to beat it. Yes. We will beat it. See, this world and everything in this world is against you. That's why you can't love this world. See, John said, if you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. You can't love this world. You can't love it because we're going to be leaving it. Sooner or later, we're going to be leaving it. See? But Jesus said in the Amplified, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. In other words, no matter what comes your way, I beat it. And I'm not going to let it harm you. So be of good cheer, be of good courage, you are going to survive. I know, we've been 46 years, and it's now. We'll survive everything this world can throw at us and will continue to throw at us. God has made a way through Christ to give us the victory. It's the only way out of here. The only way out of here. Come on. You got to leave this world victoriously. You got to live in this world victoriously. Mm -hmm. The only way that can happen is through Jesus Christ. That all the forces in the world can bring against us, we will be victorious. Yeah. You want a list of what they are? Here they are. Suffering. Disease, accidents, corruption, hate, bitterness, murder, war, arguments, backbiters, pride, arrogance, immorality, destroyed families, wickedness, drugs, drunkenness, envy, hunger, homelessness, pain, hurt, selfishness, greed, fear of death. Guess what? You can beat them all. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
in Christ, you can beat them all. Think of that homeless this day. All our people that's living under the bridge, homeless, ain't got anything. All they gotta do is call on Jesus. That's all they need. That's all they need. The problem of many of them are there because they have went their own way. And that's where they ended up. But I guarantee you, any of those people under that bridge will cry out to Jesus. Jesus is going to answer them. Jesus is going to make a way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. you got to come to me if you want life. If you go the other way, it's death. Go the other way, it's destruction. Go the other way, it's failure. You're a loser when you go that way. All of these things that I just read were here before we got here. They're going to be here when we leave. Come on. The thing is, while we're here, we got to find a way to beat them all. The lure of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. we got to beat it all. See, the threat of open hostility is in the world and it breeds hostility towards Christians. I don't know whether you realize, I've been preaching for the past 35 years, this world is against you as a believer. Come on. It's against you. Come on. Even your government is against you. Christianity is fighting now to survive here in our own country where we're supposed to be free. Right. Every other country in the world, you have a problem being a Christian. They're killing many of them. There is a hostility in our country right now against you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Come on. It's evil. It's of the devil's. But we've got to we've got to live here. We've got to be victorious over all of that. When you're born again in this world, it was full of this. Have you ever asked yourself the question? I know before I got saved that I was in trouble, fighting all kind of stuff, sin, everything. Yes, I said I didn't ask to come here. Did you? You just found out you were here. <laughs> it wasn't your decision to show up here on earth I said why am I having all this problem I didn't ask to come here <laughs> what is the answer to that here it is someone greater than you yes. and I purposed you to be here there you go yes. Yes. there you go Purpose you to be here. Somebody greater than you and I purposed us the way we are, the way we look, when we were born, the place we were born, wherever you had purposed to be here. Come on. Somebody greater than us planned for us to be here. So the thing is, we've got to find out what his plan is. Right. Let me tell you what his plan is. His plan is for you to beat this place. Yes, come on. Beat this world. Be every force that comes against you, you're going to be. Sin, degradation, immorality, uh, temptation, whatever comes your way, Christ says, I've already deprived this world of its power over you. That's why I've been in the past 46 years. I want to end up as a winner. Yeah. Yes. Christ came so we can be winners and not losers. There's a divine plan, believe it or not, for each and every one of us here. God purposed you to be here. God purposed you to be where you are for his divine plan to be fulfilled. Now, the beginning of that plan is that we will overcome everything in this world. Nothing is going to beat us. How can we be a witness? Jesus said, I'm going to give you power. You're going to be witnesses in this world. You know how you're going to be witnessing? People are going to watch your life and they're going to see you overcome. They're going to see that you're an overcomer. That you're a winner and not a loser. 
That's what's going to get their attention. See, Apostle John defines this person in our text that we read three ways. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is why, you hear me, I say it over and over again because it's so simple. It's so simple. Religion is not going to do that for you. Right. Does it say religion? It doesn't say religion, does it? No. Does it say Baptist? If you're a Baptist, you're going to overcome the world? Or if you're a Catholic, you're going to overcome the world? Or if you're a Presbyterian, you're going to overcome the world? No. Everyone who is born of God is going to overcome the world. Otherwise, you've got to be born again. And I tell you all the time, when people want to talk religion to you, don't talk religion. Ask if they're born again. If they're born again, they don't have any problems. You got it. It's all you need. No sense in arguing about what your church does and what it doesn't do or you're born again. Being born again is the key Amen. to overcoming the world. Jesus told a religious leader in, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to him. He was a, a Pharisee, a, 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 a Jewish teacher. Came to Jesus wanted to know about the kingdom of God. He said, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. This is it. This is the key. You want to overcome the world? You got to be born again. Yes. If you're not born again, you can be. All you got to do is repent of your sins, ask Christ to come into your life, and boom! You're on the road to victory. Right from that start. This experience separates true Christianity from religion that takes many forms. That, you know, people tell me all the time, well, if, if you got it so right, why are there so many different sects of Christianity out there? I say, man, that wasn't God's doing. That's right. He's only got one church. There's still only one church. Come on. That church is everybody born of God. That's right. I don't care where you're at, what you call yourself. God knows who is his people. You got to be born again. And Jesus, uh, Paul said, this is what happens. See, G Jesus knew this. Paul knew this. That in the last day, Paul was a religious person before he became a Christian. He was a religious Jew. But Paul knew that in the last days, he prophesied that this is what was going to happen. He said in 2 Timothy 3, 5, he says, they will have a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with them. In other words, don't fool with religious people. Don't fool with them. You need to fool with people who are filled with the power of God. Who's, who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Who's living their life. Who's overcoming every circumstance. Not failing, but overcoming every circumstance. Those are the people you want to hang with. That's the people I hang with. I don't want to hang with losers. I preach to losers that they might become winners. Yes. But I'm not going to surround myself with losers. <laughs> because they will settle for a form of Christianity and deny the power. See, that comes from being born again. Why they deny the power? Well, they deny the power because if they had the power, it's going to change their life. Right. They don't want to change. They want to still live in the world and have some form of religion over here. It's like the politicians. They all want to be religious until they get caught stealing and you realize their religion didn't do them any good. You got to be born again. The power that is there. This is the supernatural power that changes people's lives, allows them to overcome. I want that power. I want to overcome every tribulation, every trial, every temptation, everything that comes my way, every heartache, every pain. I'm going to overcome. Right. And I can only do it through the power of God. It's because the one who overcame the world for us is now living 
in us. Yes. Come on. See, it's Christ. Paul said it's Christ in you. Not Christ up there somewhere. No. Christ in you. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's Christ in me that causes me to be victorious. The same thing with you. 1 John 4.4 4. John said, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you, say in me, in me. is greater than he who is in the world. Yes, come on. So that's why this series that I'm doing, Christ in us, once we realize what it means to have Christ in us, we're old. Yes. Your body's going to get me off track. See, we're rolling down a track going to heaven. It's called the highway of holiness. Yes. We, we're rolling down that track. Mm -hmm. and, and as long as i got the power of God in me, nothing's going to detract me. Nothing's going to get me away. I began to realize as a Christian that I had, the, I had power over the things that used to control me. You know all them sin habits that used to control, control you? When you get the power of God and Christ living in you, it don't have power over me anymore. It don't have power over me. I laugh at it. I laugh at it. It used to grab me. It used to chain me. It used to have a hold on me. The addictions in my life used to have a hold on me. And I realized I don't have to have that because he that's within me is greater. He's already beat it. You realize that he beat every temptation, every drug addiction, every immoral uh, uh, act, every uh, 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 greed, thieving, everything. He beat it. Nothing in this world should bring us down. Nothing. And you got to realize what, what the word says. God is for you, not against you. That's when I realized, boy, I got somebody on my side now. Not only he's on my side, he's got all power. <laughs> he is Lord over everything. He's Lord over everything, and he's on my side. So that the cross of Christ gave me the ultimate victory. You want victory, you got to come to this cross. you got to have experience what took place on the cross of Calvary. Now, but even with all that revelation of what the cross is and, and all of that, there's another aspect to victory over the world. See, not only I have that revelation, i got to believe it. i got to believe that Christ in me, I can be victorious over everything in the world. Every sin temptation, every heartache, every pain, I've I got to believe that. So faith is the victory. This is what John says. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Now, how are you going to do that? This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. See, it's one thing knowing that in your mind. And it's another thing believing that in your heart. Right. That Christ in me is going to make me victorious. i got to believe that. can't just be a head knowledge. I gotta settle that thing in my heart that I am victorious. You can be victorious through your faith in the Lord Jesus. So the subject of faith is what inspired me for this series because I believe after I preach all these messages to you and you settle it in you that Christ in you, I got it. Beat. I got everything beat. I care what it is that's coming against you. I have it beat. I've had the opportunity to preach in many third world countries. I preached in Russia. I preached in the Ukraine. I preached in Mexico, in the cities of Mexico, the jungle of Mexico, Central America, Honduras, South America, British Guyana. I had to the opportunity to preach in those countries, third world countries. They're not like here. You go there, you come back here, you want to kiss the ground. You think it's bad here? People say, this place is bad. No, you want to see bad? I'll take you to bad. I'll I, I show you bad. 
But it seems to me, from my experience, that the less people have a worldly wealth and worldly opportunity like we have in this country, the more faith they exercise. Yes. I remember being in British Guyana. And, and I mean, poor, poor. People don't have nothing. The black nation, they, they got a tyrant, a, a, a dictator over them. The people have nothing. And I remember the pastor driving me past a building. It was a three-story building, open windows, and the, the, the curtains were blowing out there. I said, what, what is that building there? He said, that's the hospital. I said, what? It's the hospital. And I remember preaching in the church. And I was telling a, a lady about the hospital. Let me, she says, yeah, it's bad. That's why we've got to have faith. <laughs> See, that's why when I get sick, i got to believe God is going to heal me. Because that ain't going to do it. <laughs> they have nothing. And when you have nothing... You've got to exercise faith and God moves. Even in those countries where those people don't have anything, if they just hold on to Jesus, they're going to make it. They're going to make it. You hear what I'm telling you? That's a, every one of them countries out there, they turn to God. God will change that whole place. The more oppressed they are, the greater their faith is. Because you see, there's things in life that money and wealth can buy or fix. Come on. There are storms and trials in life we must personally face. Christianity is personal. It's between you and God. It has nothing to do with a church organization. It's between you and God. And the thing is, sometimes we... We face things in life that, that other people's faith can't, can't help us. It's got to be your faith. It's got to be my faith. i got to believe God. we got to take personal responsibility for our life. As a believer, guess what? i got to keep myself up. i got to keep myself up. The victory's got to be personal, and, it's, and, and you have the victory because of your faith. Your faith that you exercise in Christ. The psalmist said in Psalm 34, 19, A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of some of them. No, all of them. All, that's what I want. I want a God who is going to deliver me out of all my problems. You're not going to say, oh, that's too much, or that's too many. Uh, no, I want all of them. But guess what he says? The righteous man can't be unrighteous. The unrighteous out there, they can cry all they want. They ain't get anything. You can't cry out to God you won't serve, and he's going to help you. The promise is for a righteous person. Now, who is righteous? Who is that? Well, the guy I look to as, as an example of faith is our father of faith, Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, it says, Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. God, how does God determine whether you're righteous or not? Well, you've got to believe in him. You've got to have faith in him. When things are bad, you exercise faith in God. He says he's righteous. She's righteous. Look at that. She's going through a hard trial, but yet she's standing in faith, believing. Yes. Righteous. And what does it do? He delivers them out of them all. Yes. Can you believe that? Yes. Believe it. It's true. Yeah. That promise is for the righteous person. We are considered righteous by God for living our life in faith. That's why every day of your life, you've got to make a decision, I'm going to live for God. Come on. I'm going to believe God that no matter what this day brings me, and you don't know when you get up, you don't know what's facing you, but I'm going to get up and say, God, whatever. 
I'm going to believe you. I'm going to put my faith in you. That is believing God for whatever life brings to us. Apostle Paul says this in Romans 1.17. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You can't be righteous without faith. You can be religious all you want, not be righteous. You got to have faith makes you righteous. Faith in what, though? Faith in who? John says in our text, 1 John 5, 5, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Every cult in the world that's out there, every cult, the ones that knock on your door, trying to knock on my door, is Jesus Lord? No, he's not. Is Jesus the Son of God? No, he's not. Is Jesus God in flesh, as the Bible said? No, he's not. Every cult in the world denies that Jesus came. He was God in flesh. Dwelt among us. He was God in <coughs> flesh. If you don't believe that, then you're a cult. Come on. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was God in flesh. Dwelt among us, as John says in his gospel. And the only ones who's going to win this battle against the world, in a world that is permeated with false religion, anti-Christ teaching, anti-Christ spirits everywhere, will be victorious by holding fast to faith in Jesus as God's Son. <coughs> if you believe that, you hold fast to that, you won't be lured by the world. You're not going to be lured by false teaching. You're not going to be lured by every wind of doctrine that's out there. And let me tell you, the devil's constantly developing new doctrines and new teachings and all kind of things that are that are catered to the flesh of man until instead of the spirit of man. That's why we've got to be filled with the spirit. And all of this reveals our title of the centrality of victory. Centrality of Christ is the victory. Christ has to be in us. This series is going to put us in a vein of truth about Christ. See, once you get this, this is it. You got it. You can go on for the rest of your life. You're going to know what it means to have Christ in us. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Paul says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. See, I, you know, people all understand this. Is that, do, do, do you need this interpreted? Does, does somebody need to explain to you what this means? For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity, God, lives in bodily form. It was God in flesh who dwelt among us. That's it. And you have been given... Fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Now look, look, what, look, look. What. Christ has the fullness of God in Him. Then He says, "And you have been given fullness in Christ." Wait, hey, hey you mean to tell me God is in me? Yes, Come He on. is. Come on. This is what it's about. This is about winning. If God is in me, I'm a winner. You can shoot me, kill me, do whatever you want. I'm a winner. Come on, Jesus. Because what's in me can't die. What's in me can't die. So I'm not afraid to die. Come on. What's in me can't die. You might, you might destroy this body, but you ain't gonna kill me. Amen. I'm rolling on. Amen. <laughs> I'm rolling on, baby. I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to see Jesus. I ain't afraid of that. I'm going to see Jesus. How do you know? Well, he's living in me. That's how I know. Christ in me. See, every aspect of God was in Christ Jesus, bodily. Every aspect. Whatever God is was in him. Christ is the very presence of God here on earth. When he was walking the earth, it was God speaking. His words were so powerful. Remember in the gospel when 
when, when the uh, governor sent her soldiers to go arrest Jesus, yeah. and they came back without him, <laughs> and the governor said, why you didn't bring him back? We told you to go arrest him. They said, we never heard anybody speak like this. <laughs> couldn't touch him. Amen. You know why you couldn't touch him? Because it was God speaking. Right. Was, you were here in the birth. You going to go arrest God? <laughs> they came back to we ain't never heard anybody talk like this before <coughs> come on now yeah. <laughs> Paul said we have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority I love that what does it mean that we've been given fullness in Christ what does that mean 1 Corinthians 1 30 says it's because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Believers receive wisdom, righteousness, holiness, which is sanctification and redemption. Wisdom. We receive wisdom. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I became wise. Come on. See, I was a fool before. I was a fool. The wife shaking her head. Was <laughs> she was a fool with me. <laughs> she was a fool following the fool. <laughs> but wisdom came. What does it mean? Well, what it meant is that I understand God now. I understand the world. I understand man. I understand the origin of man. I understand the purpose of man. And the end of creation. This place is coming to an end, whether you know it or not. Come on. Read the back of the book. Come on. Yes. Coming to an end. This age is coming to an end. That's why we got to escape here. Victorious. So we get wisdom. We get righteousness. What does that mean? It means that I understand the evil in the world, both sin and death, that we may know the only way to obtain righteousness is through faith in Christ. That's how I'm righteous. People say, what makes you think you're so righteous? Because I believe God. Does that mean I'm perfect? No. I'm not perfect. But I'm righteous. Come on. Because I'm living in faith. I believe in God. You got to be like Abraham. The Bible says Abraham believed God even though he didn't know where he was going. God said, get out of here. Take your family and go. He didn't even know where he was going. You don't know where you're going. That's why we've got to believe God. We've got to believe God. Then the next thing he gives us is holiness, which is sanctification, which means that we have set our lives apart unto God to live for him. I'm not in that world anymore. See, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I'm here, but I don't do what they do. I don't live like they live. I don't want to live like they live. Because they're losers. I want to be amongst winners. Then redemption, what does that mean? That we have been saved from corruption, death, and given eternal life. So when we have received fullness in Christ, we receive God's nature. See, who I am now is not who I was before. I got a different nature. Come on. That's when you're born again. The Bible says you have become a new creation in Christ. The old things have passed away, and the new has come. See, new, new life, new thinking, new mind, new actions, everything. Because there's a nature that came into me that's different from the sinful nature I lived with the first 27 years of my life. So the divine nature of God is actually placed in believers where they can become new creatures in Christ. Believers receive the fullness of life right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. You're not going to get it. You get it now. Come on. I like that. I get it now. From the time believers receive Christ, they should lack nothing. Let me tell you something. When Christ comes into your life, 
He's not coming in halfway. He's not coming in with a little bit of power. He's not coming in with a little bit of light. No, he's going to come in and give you fullness of life, which you lack nothing. Soon as you come to Christ, he gives you everything. You say, well, they're not really mature yet. I know they're not, but they got, they're not lacking anything. Right. <laughs> My wife and I just started a garden. We planted some little plants. We planted some uh, cucumbers, little bitty things like this. They're perfect. They got everything. All they need is a little time. <laughs> All they need is a little time. Come on. Because every day I go out there, they up a little bit, up a little bit, up a little bit. We know what they're going to do. We plan it before. They're going to take over everything. <laughs> I'm going to bring some to you. They're going to take over. More you can ever eat. They're going to come out. Like a believer. When, when you get saved and Christ comes into your life, you got everything. You say, well, I, I can't preach yet. I can't do it. No, you ain't do that, but it's all in you. Yeah. Come on. Yes, indeed. He's giving you the whole load. The fullness of Christ is coming in you. Now, I like this preaching, man. This is the whole. <laughs> Who was good preaching? I don't know whether y'all like it or not, but I'm not feeling good. So if a believer lacks anything, say, well, believer, if, if you lack anything or any of the fullness, it's because you're taking your eyes off of Christ. You're going the wrong way. But when you keep your eyes on Christ, you've got everything. See, Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief who is the devil comes only to steal, kill, kill, and destroy. But I'm coming that you might have life and have it to what? Full. 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 That's what I want. I got a full life. I want to tell you, I have a full life. You can have a full life. Say, so, well, Pastor, I'm still facing trials. I don't care what you're facing got full life. If Christ is in you, you've got full life. You lack nothing. You can win every battle if Christ is in you. The believer receives what is the fullness. What is all for? You get fullness of joy. John 15, 11, Jesus said, I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. If that's the case, there shouldn't be any sad Christians. Amen. You can rejoice even when you're going through trials. You can, you can laugh because somehow God's going to get you out of it. You don't know how, but He can do it. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep the joy. I'm not going to let anybody steal my joy. I'm going to have joy. I don't care what. The believer receives all the necessities of life, including food, clothing, shelter. Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. See, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, what is it. How about me just seeking the kingdom of God? See, if I'm seeking the kingdom of God first, not second, first, and his righteousness, which is Christ. If I do that first, then he said, I'm going to make a way for all these things. That's why we're not out on the corner for this church. We're not out on the corner shaking cans. When I see churches out there shaking cans for people, no. God wants us to do something here in this church. He's a supply of money. Hey, come on. I don't have to go beg to unbelievers out there to help us. Come on. If God doesn't supply it, we don't need to do it. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't tell us to go out there and ask unbelievers to give us money to do what God wants us. God will give us the money. Come on. The believer receives the fullness of God's spirit, God himself. Ephesians 5.18 Do not get drunk on wine. 
which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. This is fullness. See, this is how you become victorious over everything. We've got that. We're full of God's Spirit. Believers receive the fullness of eternal life. See, there's a life inside of every true believer. It's never going to die. Never going to die. I knew when Christ came into my life as a supernatural thing, it wasn't going away. I'm going all the way. This life that's in me is eternal. Eternal means that it goes beyond this life. It's going to go into eternity. See, believers receive the fullness of knowledge of God's will. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I love that. That spiritual understanding, I can look at this world and I can see this world exactly for what it is. I can tell you what's in this world that's of the devil. And I can tell you what's in this world is of God. Come on. I can tell you what's in this world is of the flesh. And I can tell you what's in this world that's of the spirit. Why? Because I got the spirit of truth in me. The spirit of truth is in every believer where you can discern what is good from what is evil, what is godly, and from what is ungodly. See, the fullness of life and the answers to truth and reality don't come from worldly philosophy. Everybody out there has got a philosophy in the world. Everybody's got a, a, a philosophy to, 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 to live in this world. Let me tell you something. Answers to life come from one person. The Lord Jesus Christ. You want to know how to get out of here? You want to know how to survive here? You want to know how to be victorious here? It's only going to come from one person. His name's Jesus. Colossians 2.10 says, And you have been given fullness of Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. So the centrality of victory is wrapped up in this truth. Jesus has power and authority over everything. He's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. There is no other power outside of His. He's living in us. So what can come against me? What power or what authority can come down upon my head? But He that is living in me has the head over all power, all authority. What can God, there's no rule. There's no laws they can put on me. There's no authority that can take me down. There's no power that can stand between me and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can come between us. The explanation and faith of man in this world are found in Jesus Christ and him alone. You want to know where you are, where you're going? Look to him. He is the only mediator. And nobody else can help us. There's only one mediator between man and God. His name's Jesus. Man can only approach God through Christ. Come on. Many people out there that are doing all kinds of craziness, trying to somehow get in touch with God. They want to hug a tree. They want to, they want to go live out in nature thinking they're going to touch God. You want to touch God? You come to the cross of Calvary. Yes. Yes. The power from that cross will touch your life and change you forever. This is the Christ that lives in us. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Christ in us, the hope. This is not religion. This is Christ. God, the Son of God, living in us. What did Paul say? I've been crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live. But it's not I who lives, but it's Christ who lives in us. Who gave him, loved me, and gave himself up for me. That's who's living in us. The 
one who died for us is living in us. Hallelujah. Stand with me. There's people here, I know for a fact, need prayer. We got some here that's sick. I got the oil. We want to pray for healing. But if you're here right now, and you say, Pastor, I heard that message. But Christ is not living in me because I'm not winning. If you're not winning in life, Christ is not in you. You need to win. There's things in your life you're not beating, and they're beating you down. They got control over your life. You need to ask Christ to come into your life right now. Say, I want Christ in me. The fullness of God is in Christ. All you have to do is ask Him to come in. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit. And He will cause you. In the Old Testament, the prophets prophesied for God that He's going to do a new covenant. He says that I'm going to change your heart. I'm going to take that stony heart out of you. And I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. And I'm going to put my spirit in you. That's going to cause you to obey me. In other words, when that spirit gets in you, you're going to want to serve God. Not the devil in the world. You don't want to serve God. So if you're here right now, you say, Pastor, I haven't been winning. I want to win. I want Christ in me so I can win every battle. That you step out from where you are. You mean, you want, to, you want to do business with God? Let me tell you something. He'll do business with you. Who else? You might be here and say, I'm losing. I've been losing, but I want to start winning. I want life. I don't want death. I want life. I want to be victorious over everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Don't leave this place. Trust me, don't leave this place. That gospel was clear today. I don't know how any clearer I can make it. Don't leave this place without Christ. Because you don't know what you're going to face. You don't want to keep losing. You want to start winning. I was a loser for the first 27 years of my life. But I've been winning the past 46. Still winning. I love winning. I mean love winning. Love winning. Christ is the answer. I'm going to pray with